And I can move up a little now. Hey guys, so today we have the pleasure of chatting with a beautiful Miss Universe Jamaica 2020, Michael Simone Williams. First question, did I pronounce your first name correctly? <laughs> you did an amazing job actually. Okay, okay cause it, it was perfect. Because I wasn't sure at all, I wasn't sure. So the first time I saw the spelling of this thing, how did you pronounce your name? You said Mikhail, Michaeli, Michelle, or whatever, you know, like how in the world did you end up with that spelling? <laughs> well, uh, when I was younger, I think I wanted the same thing, but as far as I know, my mom completely made up the spelling. I just, I think she wanted me to have a unique name and I'm really grateful for it now. Obviously, as a child, I wasn't too happy because that girl with a boy's name doesn't really go over well for introductions. Right. But I know I am really, really happy that I have the name because it's very unique. But is it, do you want people to call you with your two names, Michael Simone, or is it Michael just fine? Well, my full first name is Michael Simone. So okay. you definitely can call me Michael Simone, but you know, Rafa, since we're close, if Michael is easier for you, then that's fine. <laughs> I'll I call you Mike. Michael Simone is a lot to say. I will call you Mike. How's that? Mike. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now. Mike sounds like a Mike. Mike, exactly. <laughs> now to those of us who are not familiar with you, okay, um, please tell us a little about yourself, where you came from, a little bit of your, your background. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Simone Williams. I'm 23 years old. I gave you the history of the name before. <laughs> I'm turning 24 on the 1st of April and I've heard every April Fool's joke there is about it. <laughs> I just literally finished my degree in marketing with a minor in psychology at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. And I actually came back after three years, after two years of modeling one and a half years ago to finish my degree. So I was modeling for a little while in London, in Paris and New York. And I had a great deal of fun, but I think it was very important to me to finish my degree. So that's what I just did. Right now. Okay. So you majored in marketing in a minor in psychology. What kind of work do you envision utilizing those two fields? My dream is to go into social media marketing. Social media sites will be in our lives for the foreseeable future. And it's important for a public figure or for a business to be able to understand the workings of different social media algorithms and how to place themselves to connect with customers. And mm -hmm. psychology, I think, is something that's a passion of mine. It's always good to know a little bit of psychology, even for yourself, just for plain interaction. But it's good for me because it helps me to understand the psychology of why we choose to buy the things we buy or consume the things we consume, even on social media websites. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, actually, speaking of consumption, um, okay, well, I've never been to Jamaica. I've always wanted to go there. You know what? I think our outfits pretty much match each other. I mean, I have the same colors as you do. I have red, orange, <laughs> black, white, the same as you do. This was not coordinated, people, okay? We did not- It wasn't. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> wow. Now, okay, so to those people like me who have not visited Jamaica, who have never been to Jamaica, can you give us like three reasons, three good reasons why tourists like me should visit your, your country? Well, awesome. Of course I could. The first thing I'm thinking when you, when you imagine Jamaica, I think people think about Jamaican food. Now, if you live in London or New York, you might, ha you might have had jerk chicken and you might have had a patty, but let me be the first to tell you it's not going to be as good as coming back to the home soil to have an authentic Jamaican patty or some Jamaican jerk chicken. Okay. When you go to these beautiful places like Boston in Portland and really watch chicken being jerked, that's when your taste buds will sing. All right. I think too, the Jamaican music is something that if you want to really experience it, it's a really good time to, a good place to be to experience Jamaican music. We have a lot of good parties, coronavirus not included, so hopefully <laughs> soon. Yeah. But if you want to experience a good party and really let yourself go and enjoy yourself, a Jamaican party with good Jamaican music is a great start. I promise you won't be disappointed. And of course, I should say the Jamaican people. I believe we're all warm and friendly and we, we will give you a wholesome experience. It's a good experience. 
That's wonderful. Well, actually, there, there's a lot of uh, Jamaicans living in uh, New York City, I believe. There's mm -hmm. a big Jamaican presence. And I did observe, I did see um, a Jamaican festival once, it was a few, few years ago. And I said to myself, oh my God, these people really know how to party, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they were having a good time. You don't know the half of it. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Now, okay, well, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, I will definitely put it in my bucket list, Jamaica. Okay, mm. hopefully before the end of the year, <laughs> depending you know, whether or not the, this freaking global pandemic is over. So we'll see. I'm saying, hopefully the virus goes away. Oh, I know. And then, yeah. we'll, and then we'll chat. Okay, by the way, speaking of the virus, uh, is the vaccine already available in your country? Yes, the vaccine is available in my country, but you know, with everywhere else, it's, it's limited, it's in limited supply. Mm -hmm. So I think at this point, we're looking to vaccinate two to 5% of the population. Mm -hmm. And that's not great in terms of herd immunity, but it's a great start. Right. So who are being vaccinated first? Right now, it's the frontline workers, such as doctors and nurses, who are really in, in more danger in terms of coming in contact with people who are exposed to the virus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. I think it's, it's the same in America and pretty much the rest of the world. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as long as the vaccine is made either by Pfizer or, or Moderna, you're, you're fine. Don't trust the other companies because God knows. <laughs> knows. Just make sure it's either Pfizer or Moderna. Now, so you're competing this year at Miss Universe. I believe, we're not sure of the date yet, but there's a rumor has it that it's, it's, some, it's going to be sometime in late April or early May. Are you ready? Are you prepared? I am definitely ready and excited to go. Okay. I have, is it two, two and a half, three months left? And I'm sure that once I get there, I'm going to be amazing and I'm going to do my best. Yeah, and we don't so know. So I am working to prepare, you know, heading in the gym, training with Lou, Sierra, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. training with my, my national organizers. So I'm, I'm getting in shape. Do you have an idea where it's going to be? No, we still don't know anything about where it's going to be yet. We've received the same news as you, which is late April, early May. So mm -hmm. no date set, no location set, but where would you I'm like sure we'll hear soon. Where would you like it to be? Well, personally, I'd like it to be somewhere in the United States of America, maybe in Florida. And I'll tell you why. There are lots of Jamaicans in Florida. I think I'd love for them to get a chance to come out and support me. And Florida is a really good close location, even to Jamaicans to come and visit and really pour out some support. You know what? I couldn't agree with you more. I was thinking maybe Miami, since the pageant was yeah. held there a few years back, and they have, they have all the resources available already. So I, I, re I really think it's going to be Miami. Yeah. So let's pray. Miami! Yes, that would be great. Yeah. So who, why do you think you should be Miss Universe 2020? Convince me. Convince the world. Well, I... I've had a unique set of experiences in my 23 years that have made me into the strong and confident woman that I am now. And that doesn't mean that I haven't had moments where I've struggled with my self-confidence or I've struggled with my idea of myself or wondered how I'm going to make myself the best version of myself. And now I know that confidence is not a journey. It's not a location, it's a journey. And it's a journey that I want to help as many people as possible on. As a Miss Universe, my biggest goal would be to inspire courage in young children and young adults who feel like they're not enough. I, this is a passion of mine because I know that so many people feel as though they don't have confidence and they don't believe in themselves. And I'd, I'd love for them to see me and to see themselves in me and feel as though, or be reminded that with confidence and perseverance, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Mm -hmm. And Good that's my why. <laughs> well, as you know, Jamaica has never won Miss Universe. Your country well, almost, almost so. won back in, in 2010, right? And um, so that was, a, I, was, I was actually in Las Vegas uh, watching that show. And I really thought Jamaica had it in the bag. And of course, you know, the result was otherwise. But nevertheless, I think the country um, is an emerging pageant powerhouse in the Caribbean. It has always been. But unfortunately, it hasn't really had any much luck with the universe. But I think that's changing now. And I think you have a very good um, national uh, organization uh, headed by, you know, Mark McDermott. So I think, I think Jamaica 
eventually, who knows, maybe this year. Like, we can only hope, right? <laughs> now, okay, I'm going back with all these different questions. You know, it, it, one is related with each other. <laughs> it's, not, it's, like, it's like, pretend, pretend to be as, as like the press, like storming with all these different sorts of questions. Name three foods, name three foods that you would not eat and why? Well, to everyone, I'm a foodie. So there's almost nothing that I wouldn't try at least once. That being said though, there's a, there's a beady vegetable in Jamaica called susumbo. And I'm, I'm not too keen on that. I didn't enjoy it. So I don't think I'd try it again. How does it taste I, What is it? I can't even explain it to you. It's kind of bitter. It's like a, it's like a young vegetable. Uh -huh. It's it, it wasn't my favorite. I'm not going to say it's terrible, but it wasn't my favorite. I don't think I'd try it again. Okay. Also, octopus. I, I did try octopus once, and, and I also am not too keen on trying it again. I, you know what? It's hard because, as I said, I am willing to try anything at least once. But the thing I always tell people that I'm not so keen on trying at all is the brain of any animal. Yeah. I know it sounds like a delicacy in some countries, yeah, yeah but monkey brain, anything... No, thank you. No, thank you. You know what? Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, I'm 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 <laughs> vegan, so I would never touch those stuff anyway. But I was horrified to see some people uh, in parts of the world where we actually eat live animals, like a live octopus, a live squid, a live mm -hmm. bat. Like, what is wrong with these people? You know, you wonder. Like, you know what? I respect different cultures. I I suppose it's something that they've grown up to to appreciate. But my, you know, it's a culture difference. So I, I didn't grow up thinking that was interesting at all. And I can't imagine how it would taste or if that would be an interesting thing to eat. So I guess that's why I'm biased against it. Right. Now, um, tell us, what do, you, what do you like doing for fun? I love having time to myself. I think that's when I have the most fun, when I have time to myself at home. And when I'm at home, I listen to a lot of music. And I did ballet for maybe six months when I was nine oh, and you, you should okay. see me yeah. <laughs> when I'm at home alone listening to classical music doing a bootleg swan leg yeah do you that's, have, me. Like, that's when I'm having the most fun do you have like a video <laughs> of you uh doing ballet in your Instagram and your social media no actually I, I didn't do it that long I don't think my mom should should have maybe had pictures I'd have to go search <laughs> yeah you should you should I, I would love to see it yeah because you, you I know have, you, you do have that ballet dancer built yeah you do have that for six months though Rafa yeah. I was already doing it for six months you know oh uh, well <laughs> you always try <laughs> I only know a PA <laughs> <laughs> that's true and that's now, like the easiest thing <laughs> now um Give three adjectives that your friend or you'd, your friends would describe you. How are you like to them? Three adjectives. Well, I'd hope my friends would say that I'm hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I love a good joke and I love giving a good joke. In Jamaica, we have a saying that says, you know, you take bad things, make laugh. And it really just means that we sometimes we go through things and we have bad experiences, but there's always a positive side. We really like to look for silver linings in Jamaica. So we're a very cheerful bunch of people. And I, I think that's a quality that I have. And my friends would probably say that I'm very driven. When I was a child, I wanted to model and I wanted to do Miss Universe. And I don't think any of them would be surprised that I am where I am now doing the things that I always said I wanted to do. A third thing, I'm a mediator of my friend group. So when we're having a difficult situation or we're at a, perhaps like a restaurant and we're having issues with the waiter and everyone is becoming annoyed or sorry, I'm the girl who mediates the situation and speaks on behalf of the group. So I'm, I've always been told that I'm very patient and I work well with people, especially in difficult situations. So people remember those. She's hilarious, she's driven, <laughs> and she's a peacemaker. Okay, three important qualities for the Miss Universe title. Just remember that. Now, um, we all have fears and anxieties. To you, what is your darkest fear? My biggest fear is that my children or the next generation grow up in a world that's completely different from the one we, we, we are now. And in a bad way, I, I would really hate to think that my children or their children live in a world where they can't breathe the air because it's poison or they have no clean water, they have no access to clean water or all the trees are cut down and life, life would sound pretty terrible. I think that's one of my biggest fears that 
the brunt of global warming is really, it, it comes on us and we don't do the things that we need to do to get ahead of it or to, to mediate against the crisis. Mm -hmm. I think that that is one of my biggest fears. Another fear of mine would probably be being in an elevator. <laughs> I'm scared of elevators. <laughs> well, well, I, I, I you, actually- Are you claustrophobic? Yes. Okay. Do you know one time I was in London and I had a casting on the 24th floor of a building and I walked up the 24 flights of stairs yeah. to go to the casting because I didn't want to take the elevator. <laughs> and then the casting director was like, hi, what's your name? And I'm like, just, Michael Simone. I was completely out of breath. Well, that was, that was, so that was your workout I, for the day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what I tell people, you know, it's exercise. Party, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. You take it, I'm fine. <laughs> now, um, do you have a boyfriend? No. I do, actually. You do? Okay. So uh, have, what was your most awkward date? Not necessarily with him, but maybe past. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't been on many dates. I really haven't been on many dates, I think. And thankfully for me, none of the dates have been very awkward. And I'm, I'm hoping it will stay that way, honestly, because I can't imagine being on a date. One of my biggest date fears, Rafa, is having something stuck in my teeth and the other person doesn't tell me. And for the whole night, I'm like, ah, ha, 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 you're so charming. Ha, 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 ha. And then I get home only to see like a piece of cabbage right between. <laughs> oh my God, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> oh my God. I would be mortified. <laughs> so... Thankfully, nothing like that has ever happened to me. And um, I'm hoping that the streak continues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what about you? Well, I've been with my partner for 25 years. So I'm pretty much all set. So I don't have, I don't have to worry about, <laughs> talk about awkward. About day. being embarrassed anymore. <laughs> I don't have to be embarrassed. I don't have to impress anybody anymore. You know what I mean? Because we just accept each other 100%, you know? So there's really no point in trying to impress each other. <laughs> but... You know, you know what I mean? So that's what a true relationship is all about. Now. I love uh, that. Um, name three things that you would never do or that you would feel uncomfortable doing. I would never hit a child for absolutely no reason ever. I would also never go to a silent party. I know that one is weird. You know, the parties where they have the headphones on and it just plays in the headphones only. Yeah. Can you imagine someone recording you and you're bopping out in the corner to nothing? Yeah. Because, it, no, I, <laughs> I'd never go to a standing party. And I, I, I would never go to the Bermuda Triangle. I, it's one of those conspiracies that I've carried since childhood. And no, I don't know. Mm -mm. Oh, you mean, I don't like, know what's uh, there. you mean uh, planes that fly over the Bermuda Triangle disappear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. It's, that's very interesting though. <laughs> Okay, well, we all have our own little conspiracy theories, I guess. You know, you have. I your, know. You know, so. is it real? I. We we would I'm have sorry. to. It's, it's horrified me now. We would have to do some further research on that because people still go to Bermuda anyway. They still have to fly over. I know. Yeah. Right? So, oh, it's interesting. That's weird. Now, um, do you think that uh, culture in general is too preoccupied with with beauty or with physical appearance and? If so, how could we change it? The thing about <clears throat> okay. God, the thing about that is psychology says that we make our first impressions of people within 30 seconds of meeting them. Mm -hmm. And I've actually heard now that it's down to a tenth of a second. So I think the way you look really plays a big part in, in how people perceive you. I don't believe the issue is so much that we are preoccupied with beauty as much as it is that we need to change our, our look or, or standards of beauty. I think that society's ideas of beauty needs to be challenged and broadened continually to include everyone. Because to me, I think that when I meet someone with my first impression and my first glance, I can see who you are on the inside immediately. You know, your confidence and your inner beauty just shines. And it's something that we really should try to train our eyes for. So do you think you're a, a good judge of character? I, I would think so. Okay. I haven't failed just yet. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, you majored in psychology, hello. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, okay, you know, life has so many rules. You know, sometimes people get sick and tired of all these restrictions and stupid regulations. Now, if there were no rules in your life for just one day, 
and you could be totally outrageous, what would you do? <laughs> You're going to think I'm worried for this one. You'd never guess it, right? Okay, is it is it like is this like what uh, is it like uh, this is not like you know something a little scare off kids right <laughs> or children? No, because <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to, to come off the guidance, video, right? Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. We can still keep this G. I I would try to drift a car. I've played a lot of Need for Speed, right? And I have the idea that all you really need to do is just speed and then jam on the brakes and do a sharp turn. And I'm thinking I, I could pull that off. As long as I'm guaranteed not to die, I'd like to try that in my lifetime. Yeah, drifting. Okay. Wait a minute, so do, <laughs> people drive, do people drive on the left side or the right side in Jamaica? On the right side. On the right side, so it's like the American way, not the British no, way. No, on the left side. Oh on my God, side, right? I'm so embarrassed. Yeah, Americans, right. Please don't. Yeah, because I, I, yeah, because I guess, yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I think that's something weird. <laughs> well, why don't you make something outrageous and drive on the right side? <laughs> Do you know, every time I visit America, when they take a turn, I get confused because I think they're turning into the wrong lane. So right. I have a minute of panic where I'm like, we're going to die. Why did you turn into this lane? We're driving into oncoming traffic. But then, of course, they just drive on a different side of the road than we expect. Right. So... Yeah, it's, it's those damn- Driving on the opposite side of the road. It's those damn British. I mean, they, you know, they make all the rules <laughs> so screwed up. <laughs> it's very confusing. Now, um, have you had an embarrassing moment? If so, what was your most embarrassing moment? Okay, so barring a moment where, you know, maybe you're walking past a cute group of guys and you twist your ankle and fall. Barring anything like that, I think when, whenever I'm asked about my most embarrassing moment, I always go back to this time when I was modeling in Paris. And I met Pat McGrath, who is a really popular makeup artist. And she's really, really good. And her nickname or her, her term of endearment, I would say, is model. And this is really what people call her straight across the board, not just in modeling, but even with her makeup line, which is very successful. It is, you know, mother's new eyeshadow. And Rafa, I looked Pat McGrath right in her face and said, so people call you mommy? <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> she was very nice about it. She really yeah. was. She was like, no, it's mother. Okay. And then I went home and of course had like a mental breakdown. Like, why would you do that? Oh my God. That's yeah. hands down one of my most embarrassing moments. Wow. I don't see anything wrong with <laughs> mommy. Like, we do. Like, I know, but can you imagine? <laughs> okay. Well, at least we got that squared away. <laughs> now, <laughs> if a... Um, if a potential employer looked into your social media account, you know, like Instagram, Twitter, whatever, what would they find out about you? Just by looking at your social, social um, media. They would see that I'm not very preoccupied with the hype of social media, I think. It's easy for, for young people to really get into social media, and, which is great because it, it gives us a chance to really get to know each other and to communicate with each other. But obviously sometimes social media can paint a false picture of what life really is, which right. is why I personally like to, I've always rather human interaction and, and really coming in contact with people and speaking to them on a more personal level, like even yourself and myself right now. I've always rather to speak or to be in person rather than to just post a picture and allow everyone to assume that this is how my life is. You know what? Uh, you are absolutely correct because I, right now I'm looking at your Instagram account, you know, um, Michael Simone, and I don't see a lot of photos or videos of you. It's very sparse, but the pictures that you put up and the videos that you put up are stunning. Like I can show you like, I love this picture of you. Let me see this one. Thank you. That's that to me screams vogue. It screams high Thank fashion. Thank you. You know that the the position of your fingers and in your in your mouth, the your eyes, the shape of your face is just it's just beautiful. I mean, you really do photograph very well. And I also like this. This one. Yes. Yeah. That was actually done by a local photographer and designer. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Would this? Would you say that this would reflect what's going to be your national costume, or do you have do you have an idea what costume you're going to wear? I'm keeping it a secret. Okay, fine, secret, whatever. 
<laughs> I want you to be blown away. You don't have you don't have to tell me, but you can email me if you want. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, um, if you could be if you could be great at one thing, what would it be and why? Okay, so for this question, I'm I'm gonna stay away from the cliches of, you know, the pageant type of. Yeah, I'd love to be great at public speaking or or you know connecting with people. Yeah. If I were to be great at one thing, I'll tell you, it's going to be violin. And hmm. I love the, the instrumental for Lana Del Rey's Young and Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. when I close my eyes and I listen to that instrumental, I can just picture the violinist in the zone, like transported to another place. You know, when violinists are like leaning back and that's me, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. So if I were to be good at one thing, it would be playing the violin. I'd love to play in like an orchestra for the Queen, you know? Do you like classical music? I do. do? Okay. I do. My mom played a lot of classical music when I was a kid. So I'm, I'm one of those people who listen to a lot of different genres because my mom obviously played a lot of music that was, I don't want to say um, older generation music, but, you know, she wasn't obviously into pop and rap and that kind of thing. Right. So I, I heard a lot of classical music and reggae, like old school reggae as a child. So I, I have really come to appreciate those genres as well. Wonderful. Now, um, here's a totally different question. What would, let's say, what would a world populated by clones of you, <laughs> Michael Simone, be like? Okay, so. A world I... full of clones of Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a quality that I love the most about myself is my, my, my propensity for compassion. So I believe that we don't know each other's experiences and we can't ever live each other's lives. So it's important like to be violin. compassionate and to... Violin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's important to be compassionate, really and to, to try to understand each other's points of views. And thus, I think that a world populated by clones of me would not have any war. I think we'd really come to agreements very easily on how we can mediate our issues and, and, and find a way to work with each other. Right. But then of course, you know, I can't sing, so there wouldn't be much music, but the violin, like if I could play the violin, so if I had the skill from the previous question and could play the violin, yeah, we'd be bopping to classical music. It wouldn't be so bad. And we'd enjoy it. It'd be I a great world if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree because, you know, I think that despite uh, the differences, you know, that exist in our world, there's still so many things that actually can unite us, like what you said, music, playing the violin, whatever, or sports, or even pageants for that matter. So I think a lot of... Uh, too many people these days are very negative and they just focus, they, they love- Concentrate focusing. on what divides us. Exactly, so because life is just too short and you know, thank God for pageants because it, it, it allows all our differences to be smoothened out and just focus on what actually, you know, uh, similar to, to each one of us. That's good, I like that. Now, what do most people think is true about you, but it isn't? <laughs> I think that many people would suppose that a beauty queen's life is perfect and she doesn't have any issues, even a model. I think people thought that I didn't struggle with any, any, anything with myself. And it's simply not true. I mean, I, I do suffer from anxiety and I work through it and I give myself the time to recover when I'm feeling overwhelmed or when I'm feeling troubled or burdened and I, I do reach out and talk to people which is why I think it's important to always have people that you can talk to and reach out to but I people think that I am I'm just on the go all the time and it's simply not true I have to give myself time to 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 work with myself I'm I'm not perfect and I would never deign to be and I am doing my best and of course as you know you know a beauty queen you, you, you can never be a real beauty queen unless you actually acknowledge your own uh, weaknesses and, and imperfections, because there's no such thing as, as, as a perfect beauty queen anyway, you know, unless you're me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, now, uh, 
Okay, this is a very, this is a very interesting question. What would you do if, let's say, you were the opposite sex for a month? As you know, men still rule the world. Wouldn't you agree? If you were a man, I, what would you do for a month. You know, I've always wondered what I would look like as a boy. I think the first thing I would do if I be just woke boy. up randomly as a man, yeah, I think I'd be handsome. Yeah. So I think I'd probably grow up my beard and try a man bun, maybe, you know, different hairstyles, see how that would look on me, see, yeah. you know, if the ladies would like me, if I'd, <laughs> you know, who I'd be and what I'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too, because I'd love to get into the mind of a man and see, you know, how society really affects men. Because we, we like to think that patriarchy only affects women, but it affects men too. And it affects their ability to be vulnerable and their ability to embrace their femininity mm -hmm. and to really pursue some of the things that interest them. So that's that's something I'd, I'd really like to get deeper into and what way to really get into it than to be there and be them. Well, so I'd, I'd do that too. The beard can, and the... Yeah, exactly. You can always sign up for a men's club and see how they hang out and what they do, what, it, what all, the, all this dirt that they talk behind their backs, behind our backs. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? The way they, the way, the way they talk about women in general. You know all the sports. I know. I I try to like, <laughs> I try to nudge them on. And be like, so women, what do we really think about them, guys? All my friends would think I'm weird. All the guy friends that I'd have in my guy life. Yeah. Because I, I'd just be, I'd be trying too hard, honestly. Like, bro, how do you feel, bro, dude, my man? Man. <laughs> Is that how they talk to? <laughs> That's interesting. Now, um. <laughs> What is like the most childish, childish thing that you still do? Suck your the thumb, most maybe? childish thing that I still do. <laughs> <laughs> no, Imagine if I said that. <laughs> I I watch cartoons. Oh, yeah. Which ones? Which cartoons? I, you like? Okay, so you're not allowed to judge me in advance. That's fine. So I, I enjoy SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh my god! My little brother is six years old. You too. You too. <laughs> I have a six-year-old brother, so that's my excuse now. I tell my parents, you know, um, Spencer would like to watch some SpongeBob, so I'm just supervising him to make sure that, you know, SpongeBob is 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 okay and child friendly. And then of course I put my feet up and I watch my SpongeBob in peace. And it's not really about him, it's me. I'm watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I think too, a good one for adults even is Avatar the Last Airbender. Avatar? That it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really, it's a really, really good one. I think it's, it's a good one for adults. It has a really great storyline progression. It's amazing from start to finish. It's a worthy series. Do you like any of these uh, Disney, like um, princess series, like Mulan, uh, Snow White, whatever? <laughs> Do you, did you grow so up I, watching them? I grew up mostly on Nickelodeon, actually. So I didn't know I did. many Disney shows. Yeah, except maybe That's So Raven. I was. I think that's where Raven used to air on a Tuesday evening at six, and I I was ready. I had my dinner ready to watch a new episode of that's where Raven. But I do love a good Disney movie, and I cry at almost the end of, at the end of almost every one of them. Mm -hmm. I can't recall a Disney movie that I haven't cried for seriously. <laughs> <laughs> There's if, that. If you were let's say if you were a superhero, what would you be and why? If I was a superhero, I'd probably be hmm. Wonder Ooh, Woman? Thor. Thor. Oh, I love Thor. Yeah. I love him. I mean, the God of Lightning thing, it's, it's cool, isn't it? Oh yeah, my so God. I he's, would, he's yeah. So, he's so strong. I'd have to say Thor. Yeah. Listen. And the whole thing with the hammer that no one else can lift. Let's talk about hammer, baby. <laughs> he can hammer me anytime. <laughs> he is gorgeous, though, isn't he? He's gorgeous, isn't he? He's amazing. You know, that's a, that's the that's a, the initial reason I watched the movie. Yeah, and that's well, yeah. It's there's nothing wrong with you know with watching a fantasy. I know we know it's all fantasy, but you know what? Sometimes there's a desire, um, you know, in the back of in our heads to say, okay, well, we I want a man like that. He may not necessarily look good, but at least he's strong. He can protect me from 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 evil people. He can rescue me from bad people, etc. We need more strong people like Thor, strong men like Thor, you know? I mean, who wants, to settle, good. who wants to settle for a wimp? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Please give me a break. Now, uh, 
what is something that you have never told anyone? Do you have any secrets? Like really dirty secrets? You see, the thing is, I, I try not to... When I'm, when I'm going through something, when I have a secret to tell, it's, it's on my chest. I have to say it. I have to tell someone like, you know, I did this. So I think everything that I could possibly say is a secret for me. I've, I've confided in someone about it. There's, there's nothing I could think to say, oh, I've confided in someone about every single thing that I could think to say. I think it's important actually to confide in people instead of keeping things bottled up. So that's, that's something that I carry on with, with my life because I, I literally can't, even if I try, mm -hmm. I'm going to end up saying it randomly. You know, my friend would be like, hi, how are you? You know that this happened to me? Randomly, middle conversation, everything. So that's how I am. I can't keep secrets. <laughs> Do you pray? Do you believe in God or the existence of a higher power? I do. do. So I, mm -hmm. I, I do pray a lot. I think prayer and journaling are two ways that I, I get out my feelings too and really express myself and get things off my chest. And it's always nice when you believe in a higher power because you can, you know, you have someone who you feel like is directing you. And, mm -hmm. But I suppose it's, it's perfectly fine if you're directing yourself. Right. And if you believe in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I know, I know some people who are not necessarily like religious, but they are spiritual to, to a certain degree, and they mm -hmm. like, they do some some type of meditation, you know, anything that will bring calmness or anything that will help them center themselves, and it, it could be prayer, it could be just like a simple walk in the woods, you know, just to experience nature. You know, I think for me that would, for me that is the best type of prayer, really. So I yeah. think I think we could all use um, you know some good old nature and communicate with our God, our creator. With, yeah. yeah, with the other things that we're sharing the earth with, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Now, um, okay, let's go to uh, something more philosophical. Is there a meaning to life? And if, if so, what is it? Why, why, why are you living? Why do we live? What is life? That's a great question. I think life has a meaning that you assign to it we shouldn't get so for anxiety purposes for people who suffer from anxiety or people who are trying to figure themselves out i wouldn't tell anyone to focus so much on on needing to have a purpose or needing to find a meaning to life because of course as you as you continue to grow and as you continue to figure yourself out you're going to find the things that you like and the things that make you feel alive right. so you don't have to rush yourself to feel like you know there's some people who know that they want to be a chef when they're six years old and there's some people who find out that they want to be a chef when they're 50 years old. And I guarantee you both people are equally fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So I think that if, if we're going to say that there's a meaning to life, it's, it's about what you assign to it and how you choose to, to look at life and to look at the things around you and how you choose to interact with yourself and the people around you. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. I, I, what do you think? I love that. I love that because, you know, it's weird because we're, we're, I know I know some people who are constantly like battling with themselves, like what to do. They constantly struggle with life and they're not sure exactly what their purpose in life is. And when they ask me that question, I mean, the only thing I can tell them is that, well, you know what? There's a reason for everything. And um, for me, I've learned to accept death, that we're all going to die one way or another somehow, and we're all going to die alone. So, but the thing is, the more I think about death, the more it compels me to live life to the fullest because tomorrow I could, I could just drop dead. And so that's why it's, it's always important to constantly uh, make amends with people that you wronged, mm -hmm. um, you know, to ask God for forgiveness. Um, even though you're not sure if you actually committed something bad, you still ask him anyway. And so I think that's where I get uh, most of my inner strength. Um, I believe so. I need, agree. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I know it's it's complicated. It's it's complicated for for some people to understand, but it it makes me who I am. It makes me it makes me it it gives me direction in my life, so to speak. Now, um, is it possible though to live a normal life and not ever tell a lie? I don't think so, and I'll tell you why. You know, when we're children, there's a there's a very clear line between what's the truth and what's a lie. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and your parents tell you not to tell lies. But as you get older, there, I, I, I would say that there's reason to lie sometimes. For example, I like English pugs, you know, the puppies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, some people disagree. They don't think they're cute. And I think they're adorable. And if you come to my house and I have an English pug, I'm going to expect you to look at my puppy and say, OMG, you're so adorable. He's so cute. He's so cute. Don't tell my dog he's ugly. Don't do it. Lie. Lie. White lie. Yeah. So, yeah. Tell the lie. Yeah. So in situations like that, you know, I, I, I see why people would be compelled to lie. I don't think we lie all the time out of malice. Sometimes we lie out of compassion. It's not always the best thing to lie. There, there are palatable ways to tell the truth. I mean, if you think that someone did a bad job, of course, there's a way to criticize them and to, to give them help to do a better job. And there's a way to, you know, sometimes people say, oh, I'm saying the truth. She did a bad job. I'm not going to hide it. Yeah. But of course, you can say that. But you can say there's a difference between saying you did a bad job and saying, hi, instead of doing this, next time I think you should do this, this would be a better idea because because as you see, it, it it didn't go in your favor this time, but if you change this, it would, you know? Right. It's interesting. So, I, I, th- I totally agree because I think, um, you know, parents, you know, with young children, rather than actually brutally telling, you know, their kid, you're stupid, you're really dumb, you know, et cetera, they sort of like use a softer, pleasant rhetoric to so as to keep the child's ego and self-esteem, uh, self-esteem intact. And... Naturally, parents lie all the time to their kids. Oh, honey, you, you, you're <laughs> that drawing is so beautiful. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if if you if you flunked your biology class. I still love you, honey. You're you're, all, you're always going to be a, a wonderful scientist, and it doesn't matter if they flunk you. You're still awesome. You know that kind of <laughs> you know praising their ego, so to speak. It's a lie. Parents lie all the time, you know. But yeah, so and it's, sometimes it's, the lies it's it's acceptable because you know we have to. As you said, there's, there, there are reasons to, right. to tell a white lie. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for people's ego or out of compassion, you, you know, you right. say a little thing that's not necessarily true. Yeah, and sometimes, so you, nice you, know, and sometimes you need to lie. lie. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you need to lie to save a person's life. Like during war, during wartime, when the enemy is trying to look for your friend who they think should get killed, what do you do? You lie. No, I don't know. I, I don't know where he is. You know, even though you mm-hmm. know where he is, but I know you lie. You lie anyway, just to save his life. So yeah, they're they're yeah. Some, every rule fascinating so life is complicated and there's a lot of gray areas in life you know so now exactly so earlier we're talking about you know like uh movies and all what movie can you watch over and over again without ever getting tired of it this is too easy (laughs) pretty woman and it wasn't even hard i didn't even think one second way why pretty why pretty woman i love i love pretty woman too why I think it's just such a fairy tale. I love a good ending and it had a really nice ending. You know, the moment when you thought everything was going to crumble and they weren't going to end up together and you're like, yeah. you two are stupid. Why are you doing this? Yeah. And then they did and he came back and he found her. My type of movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. amazing plot. I, yeah, it's, it's, like a Cinder- it's like a Cinderella story, pretty much. You know, like boy, uh, well, in this case, prostitute meets man. A rich man, <laughs> man meets prostitute, and they fall in love with each other. They get married, right? So that's pretty much the thing. So if the it prostitute happens, turns it out to look good as a rich woman, mm-hmm. exactly. Now another movie that I like is um, the gen- the officer and the gentleman. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's uh, no. Richard Gere. Look it up. The officer and the gentleman. So Richard mm-hmm. Gere plays this uh, military officer who falls in love with a w- young woman who works in a factory. So, you know, um, I forgot the, the actress's name, but it's, one, it's, again, it's one of my favorite movies because, again, it's, it's another Cinderella story. You know, boy meets girl, girl meets boy. They fall in love and they live happily ever, ever after. So those kind of movies That's are- That's my there. type of movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm no. going to write it down and I'll watch it later. <laughs> Go look for it. That's my yeah. type of movie. Honestly, you caught me there. Well, the, does, your boyfriend, gorgeous, so. does your boyfriend appreciate that kind of movie? Like chick flicks, they call it chick flick, chick flick. Does your boyfriend like? No, I think he's. I think he's the 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 regular guy. He'd rather watch action you know, John Wick or something. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy movies. Well, at least you guys compliment each other. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like pretty much. Now, um, Rafa, can I ask you for one second? My battery's about to die. Okay. I'm going to plug the phone in. All right. Okay. So I'm slipping away. Yes. Okay, she's back. 
Now let's talk. Let's talk a little about your your modeling um, career. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is okay? What is the best aspect of modeling, and what is the worst aspect of modeling? Okay, give me a second. Is that your Christmas decoration? So sorry. Ooh, that's a pretty cute little floor bouquet right there. I know. I'm so happy I got it. Yeah. It's probably made okay. in China anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is made in China. You are so terrible. China, China. Okay, so. Modeling. Back. Modeling. Mike, tell us what is the best and the worst part about modeling? Go. If I'm to be candid, the best part about modeling is being able to travel to different cities and meet new people. And, you know, most of the girls are usually in your age group. So models are between maybe 16 and 25. So it's, a, it's, it's nice to meet people in your age group who are going through the same things you're going through. And you can have different experiences and travel the world together, basically. And you meet these people in different places. You meet one girl in London and then you have a show in New York and you see her and hi yeah. you know it doesn't feel like you have to meet one person you never meet them again they're just your unrequited friend forever yeah but of course there are there are bad things about modeling i think one of the hardest things for modeling with me is struggling with the standard body type that they have mm. and oh it's hard to get into that i i i would tell any young girl who's going into modeling to do it in in partnership with her parents and to go to bookers who are supportive and who will understand. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be thick thin to be a model. I mean, this is really the standard, the standard thing for a high fashion model, but never fair, high fashion modeling isn't the only branch of modeling that exists. Right. So just find what, find what you are interested in and do it with your parents because you really need your parents' support right. and your friends' support and mm -hmm. find bookers who will support you. Uh -huh. Now, um, when did you begin modeling? How, how old? When I was 20. Oh, okay. So, you, so you that was like maybe 2018. Boomer. Yeah, okay. Yep. Wow, that's interesting. Now, um, how tall are you? Like, you're... Five, ten and a half. And the half is very important. <laughs> wow, you, that is quite tall. Yeah. So that's, that's actually, that's a perfect ideal height for a high fashion model, for a runway model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, of course, you have a fabulous bone structure, you know, you're, you're Thank very you. chiseled, like features and whatnot. So the first, that's where the first time I saw your pictures, oh my God. And the first time I saw you, you being crowned as Miss Universe Jamaica, oh my God, this girl is stunning. So yeah, she'll, Thank definitely, you. she'll definitely gonna like make waves and stuff. Uh, yeah, going back to the best and worst aspect, yeah, I, I totally agree with you because um, there are all sorts of uh, modeling um, agencies now that cater to specific types. So it's just not the tall, thin type, but also, you know, plus size or short petite, the petite size, so forth and mm -hmm. so on. Um, but, yeah. but let's be honest, okay? Let's be honest. The high fashion industry will never, will never accept fully a, a plus size model. Uh, who's that woman who, um, what's her face? Uh, Kelly Graham? She's an Ashley Graham. Yeah, Ashley Graham, she's an exception. She's an exception um, because she's beautiful and she has she has something about her, the, the X factor. That's why, you know, she, she made it big. But honestly, no, no. Si a plus size models will never be fully, fully accepted. So that's why you need to create a totally different market for uh, for the plus size models. And I'm glad, I'm glad that, be, that they're being more uh, exposed and being more accepted by society in general because, you know, we do tend to just focus on one type of beauty. Now, um, the bad aspect of modeling is that, of course, you, you, sexual harassment. Um, you have even in the in the, in the beauty uh, beauty pageant industry, you'll always see people, especially men, like dirty old men, people who are just weird and bizarre, who would harass, stalk, sexually molest beautiful girls. It's, it's, in it's in industries like this, yeah, you always find men who are all too excited to take advantage of mm -hmm. young women's dream and they're wanting to achieve something. And not just young women, I should say, young men and young people, their right. dreams and they're wanting to achieve something. They take advantage of it and try to manipulate them because of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very unfortunate. 
And that's why I think it's very important to have bookers and people that you can talk to. Because right. if, a, if a person from a big fashion house, for example, makes you feel uncomfortable, you should be able to feel safe to talk to your agent and to talk to your agency and your parents to say, this person made me feel uncomfortable. And right. not to feel as though if I say this, then I'll never get another job or, you know, because you are always the most important denominator. You are the common denominator and you need to be okay. And that's just it. Mm-hmm. Would you ever model totally nude? Let's say if the price is right, if you're desperate. You know, not not if the price is right, if I'm desperate. It, it depends on on the, the idea of the shoot. I, I'm one of those people who believe that the naked body is beautiful. I mean, we were born naked. So I have no issue with my body. And if the shoot were to be artistic, have you seen Miss Canada's shoot recently? Nova yeah, shoot yeah, the the, the, yeah, Novus uh, photos. Yeah, artistic. You know, yeah. It's, as long as it doesn't look like Playboy Hugh Hefner type, yeah. um, yeah. Yeah, she's she's very Grace Jones, and I and I and I love Grace Jones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you get the nail right on the head. Exactly. Now, have you have you met like Naomi Campbell? Who is your favorite model? Who do you look up to as your um, inspiration from as a model? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I would say Naomi and Grace Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I actually met both of them. So I was at that casting for Valentino and Naomi was doing a, you know, I have to plug myself here because I'm in the video on YouTube. Of course, I'm just in the corner smiling like, (laughs) (laughs) what? (laughs) I'm in the video. (laughs) I I met her at a Valentino casting and she was really, really amazing. And I met Grace Jones at this, the Tommy Zendaya show in Paris. And she was as full of life as she appears to be on the internet in her movies. That's her genuine personality. It was so amazing to see. Sometimes you think she's so full of life here. Like that must be a lie. You cannot, you can't tell me that this is how she is all the time. Right. And then I met her and it was true. She was, she just, she's just so warm and she, she's just so, she just, she fills the room. Yeah. She fills the room. She really does. Isn't, isn't Grace Jones is, is Jamaican, isn't she? I think she was born yes. in Jamaica, right? Wasn't she? Okay. All right. Yeah, I thought, that's, I thought so, yeah. And I think, yeah, she's she's amazing. I saw her in several, uh, a couple of James Bond movies, and she makes mm. she makes the, the best villain. I mean, her looks are so intimidating. That's why, you know- Because she has saw, that yeah. very strong- Yeah, so when I saw, when, the first time I saw the pictures in Miss Universe Canada, oh my God, instantly Grace Jones, you know? I mean, that- fears that powerful very Mm -hmm. intimidating look you know get out of my way bitches you know i'm here i rule the stage get out of my way that sort of attitude (laughs) and that's exactly what you're going to do at miss universe 2020 it's all about the attitude and fierceness girl (laughs) now if you could teach everyone in the world one just one concept what concept would have the biggest positive impact on humanity. Go, Mike. I, I think I, I think I gave a little, a little thing about this earlier. And another question. Okay. One of the biggest things that we could learn is to be compassionate and to try to understand other people's points of view, and where they're coming from, and how even our actions that may be selfish or ethical, if we were to consider deeply how it would affect them and affect their livelihood and their family, then maybe we wouldn't make some of the decisions that we make. And maybe we wouldn't be in some of the terrible situations that we're in because, of course, everything has a ripple effect. So when we do one thing, it affects not only just one person, but the other people that they may affect because of how you affected them. Right. So it's a it's a really great concept that I would love for other people to to take heed of and to to make a part of their lives. In other words, we we all uh, need to be empathetic. We we always have to uh, put ourselves in someone else's shoes. In other people's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I perfectly agree, totally. Now, what headline do you want to see a newspapers the day after Miss Universe? <laughs> you made this too easy. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm picturing it all right? I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm picking up the newspaper and the article says, the first Miss Jamaica to be Miss Universe, Michael Simone Williams, you know? And then there's me, of course, with the crown, and I'm crying, but cute crying, and I don't cute cry. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to work on that because when I shed one tear, it's 
Yeah. But you know, there's me and there's a cute tear coming up, come, coming out of my eye and the crown, and I'm like, a really dreamy expression. I've preached it all. <laughs> so, you, so you have been practicing your winning reaction, right? <laughs> I need to. Yes, you need to. The thing is, I can't fake cry. And I'm telling you, Rafa, you don't want to see me cry. Like, don't get me sad at all because one tear will turn into several. That's my issue. <laughs> I mean, even when I won Miss Jamaica, I, I was standing there and thinking to myself, do not cry. Anything you do, do not cry. Cry backstage because if you start to cry, all the pictures are not going to be cute. Don't do this to me right now. <laughs> So I had to just smile and... And who, and who has time to Photoshop and all your crying pictures, tears. right? <laughs> no time to Photoshop. This is real, girl. Real tears. <laughs> well, okay. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll, we'll visualize that particular moment, you know, as, as we speak. Now, let's play a little game. Let's play Fast Stop. I'm ready. I'm going to say two things, and you tell me which one is your favorite. Ready? Okay. Ice cream or yogurt? Yogurt. iPhone or Samsung? iPhone. <laughs> lights off or lights on? Lights on. I'm comb, the dark. Okay. Comb or brush? Brush. Hmm, interesting. Left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. Money or love? Love. Okay. What's your favorite color? Blue. Oh, me too. Me too. Really, twin. Yeah. It's the color of tranquility and, yes. and, and and purity. When I look at the sky, it gives me a lot of like peace. And I feel I feel exactly my reason. Yeah. And I see, you know, it's ethereal, the, the ethereal feeling. What is your favorite flower? Roses. Okay, there are many types of roses. Is there a specific type that you like? The thornier, the thornier, the better. Probably. <laughs> I say red roses. They're very romantic. I think roses because they're great as flowers and they also make good tea. And I love tea. So that's, <laughs> that's really where I'm going. Like. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. You can actually drink uh, rose petal leaves. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. What is your What is your favorite holiday? Summer. Does that count as a holiday? Yeah, I love summer. Uh, no, like a specific, like Christmas, Valentine's Day, Halloween. Oh. Okay. In Jamaica, we don't celebrate Halloween much, so I'd say Christmas. Oh, okay. Interesting. Well, what about carnival? You guys have carnivals, right? We do have carnival. Yeah. Um, you know, so many people in Jamaica are very sad right now because obviously we didn't get to have a carnival in 2020. Yeah. But, you know, let's just keep our fingers crossed for the future. Yeah. What is your favorite drink? Hmm. Tea. Can I say tea? There's yeah. also a, there's also a soda in Jamaica called Ting. It's a grapefruit soda. I don't know if it's sold overseas, but it is amazing. I am mm. I am Miss Ting. I'm the Ting ambassador. I love Ting. It's the only soda I drink. Now, do you do you put something in it? Do you like honey or lemon, cinnamon? Mm -hmm. maybe? It, Nothing? It's sweet. I promise you, it's sweet. Oh, okay. It's 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 really really good. So you don't drink coffee? No. Really. Not. But Jamaican coffee is some, was one of the best. It is, and I drink it if I need to, but I try not to need to. It makes me very jittery. Mm, okay. And then I can't go to sleep and I value my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Now, would you rather have more time or have more money? I'd say more money because with money, you can technically buy time. Okay. I agree. Because you can, you can get people to do things for you and then you have a time, so. I agree. Would you rather know all the world's languages or speak with animals? Can I be cheeky and say that if I know all the world's languages, then I could speak to animals because animals have a language, I'm sure of it. But you, fine. I guess you can do both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's stopping you, right? <laughs> yeah. But definitely all the world's languages. Can you imagine being a polyglot for... God. All the languages in the world. It'll probably like, say, no one can talk behind your back. No, you know about anything. That, in addition to the fact that the rest of the world are clones like you, there'll be forever peace, total peace. You know what I mean? So let's work. Let's work on that, girl. Now, would you rather live without the internet or live without air conditioning and heating? 
Hard hey. You're so mean. I know. Yeah. I know. I mean. I, I'd have to toss the AC and the heating. You didn't. You didn't say anything about fans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? Oh, I'd rather lose the ability to read. I think speaking is a much easier way to communicate. It's, it's quicker. That's true. You know what? In this day and age, nobody likes reading anymore. Everything is visual. Everything is video. Everything is social media accounts. Everything we all we all base reality society, uh, you know, on the way how we perceive things through media, through pictures. Mm -hmm. We don't read books anymore. Nobody reads books anymore. Is Not me. Awesome? I think the last, oh. the last the last book. <laughs> what was the last book I read? Actually, the last book I read. Actually, no. There's not actually a, a bunch of instructions for um, my mask. <laughs> 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 That's not a book. <laughs> I know, but the instructions are longer than a book, than an average book. So yeah, that's, that was the last book that I've read. Now, uh, would you go to dinner alone or would you go to concert alone? I'd rather go to dinner alone. I actually have. You, have? you know, when you're in a foreign country as a model, you have to be creative here, you know. So you want to eat at a restaurant, go by yourself, child. And so I, you, I certainly have. So you never feel lonely though or depressed? I, I got used to being by myself as a model. On, it, it, it's almost gotten to the stage where I really enjoy my own company. I'm telling you, I crap myself up. So I'm totally fine eating by myself. Maybe as long as I have my phone so I don't look too like lonely for yeah. someone to come and say, hey there, lonely girl. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be able to control fire or water? So you do watch Avatar. This is such an avatar question. I would rather be a water bender because there's water in so many things. So I think I'd have, yeah. Well, water water kills fire and not the other way around, right? But then again, we both need, we, we need both elements to survive, to live. So hmm. yeah, that is, that is a very hard question. Hmm. But when you think of forest fire, you, you know what I mean? Or floods, too much water, either it's too much water or too much fire. So, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, so, but technically, you would only be taking water from somewhere and not creating it. Yeah, that's true. You that's could true. maybe freeze back the Arctic. <laughs> you could do a lot of good being a waterbender, you know, because you that's could put true. out fires when they start. Do you remember when the fires were really sweeping across Australia? That yeah. would just be you sweeping in like Superman. Yeah. Yeah. That was just one really tragic, tragic incident. You know, I hope it never. I hope it never happens again. Now, would you rather always be ten minutes late or always be twenty minutes early? I would always rather to be early. Okay. Yeah. So you always, when you go to a go see, do you allow how much time do you actually go there? Like, how much time do you allow, so it's not to miss a go see? That's, that's hard because have you ever watched America's Next Top Model? You oh, watch that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, when they have the four go sees in one day or they have many and they're so far mm -hmm. apart from each other. Oh my God. And you have to read the map. Coming yeah. early or late. Yeah. You know, getting there early or late isn't, it's not up to you anymore. Yeah. It's not up to you, girl. You just gotta just go. So yeah. you might be late, but just go. As long, as long as you have a good excuse, you know, they're fine with that mm -hmm. one. Would you rather be beautiful but stupid or intelligent but ugly? <laughs> I would say I'd rather be intelligent, but I'm not going to use ugly. That's such a strong word. But listen, we're all beautiful to someone. Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm sure I'm going to find a partner who thinks I am the world's, like God's gift to man. So I'd rather be intelligent and, and find my partner. Okay. Good answer. Would you rather be married to a 10 with a bad personality or a six with an amazing personality? Oh no, I could not stand a boring household. So it's going to be the six is an amazing personality. Okay. All right. Can you imagine like you just have a, a, a trophy piece? I, I, I want... But so, you know what I mean? A, a bad, somebody who has a bad personality, you can always send them to a, to a uh, charm school. <laughs> you, know <what> I mean? <laughs> you know, like, whereas, you know, a person with an amazing personality, okay, fine, you know, you have an amazing personality, we all know that. It could be very exhausting, wouldn't you think? 
So I don't know. It's just me. I mean, perhaps. Yeah. But it's amazing personality to you. So you'd you'd love it. Maybe your type of person is someone who doesn't speak. I have friends who do not want their partners to speak. Really? <laughs> so that's perfect for them. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Well, you're, you're, you're the psychology major, so you know better than me. Hey. <laughs> yeah, tell her, child. <laughs> now, another game. I'm ready. You give me a wrong answer. Okay? First question. Why is the grass green, Mike? Because cars drive and the, the, the gasoline from the cars made the grass green. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Why do dogs wag their tails? They're trying to fan us away. So we're very annoying in their presence. They're trying to send us away. So that's their way of saying. I like that very bitchy attitude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to, they want their personal space. They do not yeah. love us at all. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road, Mike? Bok, 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 bok. Mm -hmm. To get to school. Mm, okay. I like that. Yeah, the chicken was going to chicken school. Chicken school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're learning what? How to fry themselves? Yes, you know, because... <laughs> The chicken language, you know, we don't give it enough credit. So sometimes, you know, prefer may not mean a prefer. So we have to, they have to learn their own language. And, and you know, it's, it's much like when we learn English in school. So the chicken really had to get to school to make sure that they pass their um, bird test. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> I like that. It's silly, but hey, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you can give you a wrong answer. <laughs> All right, exactly. How do you make an apple pie? I love apples. Okay, so the first thing you need for an apple pie is a can of peaches. That's the most important thing. I really hate when people make apple pies with all the peach. That's the most important thing. So you get the peaches and you put them in the pie crust. And then, of course, you cover them with the, the strips of a thing. And there you go, an apple pie. No apples at all. No apples at all. Okay, I like that. An apple apple pie. Love it. Correct. Mike, where is the North Pole? I can't find it. Where is it? Definitely in Mexico. Are you sure? I thought you knew that. Yes. I must have flung my geography class, damn it. You know what? Oh my I'm going to check the internet. Yeah, I'm going to check. Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank it's you. It's in Mexico. Yeah, I Somewhere near the equator in Mexico, right. definitely. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How do you eat pizza, Mike? I don't know how to eat pizza. Show me. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. You're supposed to get a big glass of Pepsi okay. and then you dip the pizza slice in the Pepsi Ooh. and then you simply smell it. You're eating pizza. Okay, because I've always thought that you're supposed to slice it and eat it with your hands. Your no, no. I, I really hate when people do that. That's the very, it's, it's, it's uncouth, it's uncultured. I agree. That's not how you eat it's pizza. also very messy. You know the I mean? Italians don't eat it like that. Mm -hmm. How do, how do they eat it? They just, they simply smell it. They dip it in, in Pepsi and they... Oh, <sighs> I should try that. I'm yes, Italy, but I think please I try it. Tell me how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that sounds interesting. Last question, Mike. Wrong answer. Who will win Miss Universe 2020? Someone who didn't enter. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Someone who did not answer. <laughs> Someone who choked. <laughs> Someone who forgot. <laughs> Someone who has a very short memory. <laughs> Someone. Someone who said the wrong thing. Perhaps. When Maybe the rules have changed. Yeah. I enjoyed this interview chat, more like it, immensely. Right? Yeah, we have to do Thank it. Thank you. We have to do it again. I we know. have to do it again. Promise me you will. We have to do it again as as the pageant approaches because you will have yes. to give us, you have you, ha you will have to give me and your fans some hints what your gowns are going to be like, your national costume, you know, all the preparation and stuff and everything, you know. Agreed? Oh, that's why you want me to come back. That's Damn. right, baby. It, this is a trap. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make you let my national directors get mad at me, honey. 
Oh, you Mike, know what? Will, Mike will you know understand. What, Mike loves me, so he'll 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 understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I I really really we'll hope to God that the pageant this year is going to be on U.S. soil, preferably Miami, because you know you're close to Miami. I'm close. You know, it's just what what two hours away by by plane. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So the, I think the, my only concern is that I don't think I'll be able to survive wearing a mask for two hours. All oh, the floor. entire time. Yeah. And because now it's, it's, it's a federal law. Yeah. But can you imagine us? Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> like, Rafa, like what are you okay, about? two hours for you, but imagine the girl coming from, yeah, you know? So, so unless, well, yeah, I, I, I really don't want to cause drama on the plane. You know, who's that crazy dude? You know, <laughs> Where's <laughs> back? The plane diverts back to Massachusetts, and I missed the pageant altogether. I said, <laughs> so stupid. They have to drop you off, like you know. Um, maybe maybe I'll, maybe, I'll maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just row, row a canoe or or a, a boat. Maybe who knows? There, there's an idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot to ask you one question. Okay, so if you had a choice to pick a roommate in Miss Universe, who do you want it to be? I. I wouldn't mind having someone who speaks another language. Maybe if they spoke a little bit of English, that would be great. I, I speak a little French. And by a little, I mean, bonjour, bonsoir. <laughs> 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 but I would, I, I, I would like to have someone who knows another language to, you know, to see what I can learn from them. Okay. I, I would also probably like a Caribbean queen. Yeah, because we'd have a lot in common. I don't think they're going to be that nice, but that would be cool. Have you um, have you had any chance to chat with uh, your other fellow Caribbean queens? Well, the Miss Universe girls have a group chat that where okay. most of us are in. I think almost all of us are in, and we you know talk to each other from time to time and talk about world events and when it's someone's birthday, we send birthday greetings. So we are in touch, but not too much because we're all busy and doing our own thing. So right. yeah, but I'm excited to get to meet them when the time comes, of course. Yeah. Oh my God, it's, it's just going to be a blast. It's just going to be a blast. I really, really hope to God it's going to be, a, I have a feeling it's going to be a wonderful show. It's, an, it's going to be an amazing show, despite all these uh, safety guidelines. But I think- I think know, so too. I think it's going to be worth the wait. Yeah, definitely for sure. So, oh, I can't wait. Cool. Getting so excited. Listen, sweetie darling, Mike, I thank you so much for um, consenting to do this interview, this chat, and we'll definitely do it again. And um, I wish you the best of luck. I have a feeling you're, you're going to be there. And well, right now, you're one of my favorites right now, of course. Duh. And that's not a white lie. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> so, let it be known. It's not a white lie. It's the truth, people. I love Miss Universe Jamaica Mikey. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rafa. This this was a really great interview. It was really, really lighthearted and fun. I think it's a, it's a, it's a welcome break from the regular, very pageanty questions. It's yeah. nice to, you know, have a little chat to get to know me and get to know you. It was really, really fun. And, and I can't and wait to do it again. Promise me you will. I certainly will. I'll, I'll talk to Mark and uh, we, we can arrange uh, another interview date again. Listen, okay. have a wonderful weekend. I really wish I could be with you because I'm so sick to death about this cold weather. I could use some Jamaican warmth myself. You know? <laughs> I can, yeah, I'm sure you can. It's really, really warm here. It's amazing. I'm not showing off. I feel like I'm showing off. Sorry. <laughs> Have a wonderful weekend and we will definitely uh, see each other again. I'm sending you a virtual you. hug, baby girl. Virtual kisses. Thank you, Rafa. You're amazing. And the next time we chat with each other, learn how to properly <laughs> orient your iPhone so we can be like horizontal. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay. Next right. time we should come 10 minutes early just so that we can figure that bit out and then. Okay. Okay, honey, take care and I will stalk you on your social media. Bye. Thank you. Take care.